okay, I know, I know, I promised that our next video I'd be doing bra stuff, but here's the thing, I didn't like pay attention to the calendar when I said that, and today's my anniversary! It's my 11th anniversary, so today we're talking about the dress, next time we will get to the bras. This is the make that I feel really made me a seamstress. I had sewn plenty before, but mostly it was costumes. It wasn't things that I was gonna wear in seriousness. This was the first thing that I made that I was wearing on an important day that people were gonna be able to get up close and see. I mean, if, if you're on stage, uh, you can get away with a lot of like little imperfections and stuff that just aren't gonna read. People aren't gonna see them. People were gonna get close to this. I had to get it right. So what we're gonna talk about today is I really wanna dive into all the alterations I had to do to this dress. Um, I did not start off as the creator of this dress. I actually ordered it and I'll, I'll get into that story in a minute, but I wanna really talk about how I had to change this dress, all the work that I had to do to it. I actually made it into a convertible dress so I could take the big skirt off of the bottom and be able to dance in a shorter skirt all night. So I'm gonna go through all the nuts and bolts and how all of that came together. And what I'll do is I'm gonna tell the story of the dress first. If you've heard it already and you don't wanna hear it again, that's totally fine. I did talk about it. I think it was in the first So Ask Me Anything. Um, I'll just timestamp below if you want to come back in for all the nuts and bolts and alteration talk. Um, you're welcome to do that. But for those of you who haven't heard my dress story, I, I will fill you in on what you've missed. Uh, I did what a lot of brides do when we get engaged. We go out and like grab a whole bunch of like really overpriced, super thick bridal magazines and start flipping through looking for dresses. And I knew right away that I wanted a red dress. Um, both my husband and I, in different facets of our life, have had the nickname Ruby. So so for some of my performance life, my name was Ruby Doomsday, and he was always Ruby at work, and red is just, it's always, it's a color that we both love. So um, our wedding colors were red, black, and leopard print. And actually, if you look inside my fascinator, it's leopard print. <laughs> Made so much better by the fact that our best man had a 19, I'm gonna get this wrong, a 1944 Mercury that was painted flat black with a leopard print headliner and red hubcaps. So, I mean, obviously it was meant to be. Now, I'm, I'm a, a multi-passionate person. There's a lot of stuff I like doing. Um, and so there's things that I've done for other people's wedding that I was like, I just don't want the stress of dealing with it at my wedding. I used to be a hairdresser, but I was like, I don't wanna do my own hair. I ended up doing my hair and also the hair of my entire bridal party and my mom. I said, I'm not gonna make my own cake. I've made wedding cakes. I didn't, I didn't want that stress. I made my own cake. And I said, for sure, for sure, I am not sewing my own dress. I sewed two graduation dresses, one for my grad, one for my boyfriend's grad in high school, and I was so unhappy with both of them. I'm like, I just wanna love how I look that day. I am not sewing my own dress. <laughs> Well, so as I was flipping through the magazines looking for red dresses, I felt like they all just looked like prom gowns. Um, and so I needed to find something that was red but still looked like a wedding dress. And then I came across this one. Um, I just, I flipped to the page and I stopped and I was just like, I can't believe I spent this much money on magazines because this is, I, I just needed this page. <laughs> This is the dress. I need to have this dress. And one day I was driving down 16th Ave in Calgary and I saw the dress. It was in the window of a bridal shop and it was like mind blown. Oh my God, they have the dress. So my mom and I decided to go. We're gonna go have the experience of dress shopping and do the whole thing where you stand in the mirrors and stuff, which is weird because both my mom and I actually really hate shopping and the shopping that we hate the most is clothing, but this was like a different experience and we were excited for it. So we go to the store, I walk in, they start asking me all the questions about like what style I'm looking for, what vibe I want, ornamentation, I'm like, listen, let me save you the time. I want that dress. That is my dress. Except that dress was in a size eight and I was like a 14. <laughs> so I said, well, do you have it 
in a larger size for me to try on. Um, and they said, no, we don't. And I said, well, um, do you have any other mermaid cut dresses? So I, at least I can see the silhouette on my body and then, you know, we can always order that one, but like, let me make sure that it, the, the shape is right for me. So the sales rep goes into the back room, she comes back a few minutes later with another sales rep. And she's like, all we have for you to try on are ball gowns. And I was like, I really, like, I am no Cinderella. I do not want a ball gown. And the second sales rep um, does this. Well, we don't really have a lot in your size. So there's like two dresses here you could try on. So trying to salvage the experience, like we're here to have fun, we're here to do the thing. Okay, cool. So I try on the dress, it's a white ball gown, it's a corset lace up back, and it's got like red um, embroidery. I'm sure y'all have seen them. They were kind of a big deal for a while. Um, and so I tried it on and they were like, what do you think? And they were actually trying to sell me on this dress. And I was like, well, no, like I tried it on, but it's not what I want. Like, I'm standing here in a white ball gown and what I wanted was a red mermaid. Like, probably not. So, it was what it was. We left, but the experience left me feeling, like, just so bad <laughs> that I was like, there is no way in hell I am going through that again. Not happening. So, we had gone to a wedding the year prior in Hawaii and the bride at that wedding and all of the bridesmaids had all ordered their gowns off of eBay. I know, I know, it's not fair to the designer because they're all knockoffs. I get that. But I, I was hurting and there was no way I was stepping foot inside a bridal shop again. It wasn't happening. So I did actually find this dress in a few different shops on eBay. And I picked the one that wasn't even the cheapest, but it had the best reviews. So I felt the most confident that I was going to get a good dress out of it. So I went through like the whole whatever add to cart or something. It, I can't remember if I had to contact them or, or what the deal was. Um, but I had to fill out this list of measurements and I know how to take my measurements properly. So I, I know that was not going to be an issue. And the amounts of like they had me measure absolutely everything, like things that you don't really even need to measure with a dress. But I thought, wow, they're getting me to measure absolutely everything. Like they're getting me and they, there was a whole thing written out on how to take meticulous measurements. So I was like right on because if they are getting me to take this many meticulous measurements, they're probably going to use them, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not, not so much. So the other thing I didn't know is that you have to order the crinoline separate. Um, like the, the poofy part that makes it poofy, you have to, it's, it's not included in the dress. I didn't know that. Anybody who's ordered a wedding dress before will be like, oh yeah, of course, you gotta order that separately. But if you've never ordered a wedding dress, how do you know this? There was nothing on the website saying that I had to order it separately or nothing in the communication about measurements. There's not, hey, would you like to add on a crinoline? Nothing. Now I had ordered a bunch of stuff from China. I did all my own flowers. So I ordered silk flowers so that I could just have them done up ahead of time and I wouldn't have to send anybody like the day of running to a florist. Um, I had ordered my shoes from China. And so as stuff came in, you know, you kind of take it off the list. And one day I come home and there is a 11 by 17 or 14 by 17, I think, yellow bubble pack envelope on my doorstep from China what the heck did I order from China that's going to come in an envelope like this and it's squishy? Like, what could this be? And I thought the only thing I have left to come is my dress. There's no way this is my dress. No way. So I open up the envelope and it's my dress. And it's not even folded nice. It's just like crammed in there and it's just a big ball of red and white and gold. And it, it... and again, I thought, okay, I'm going to, it's probably okay. I'm going to try it on. So I put the dress on. They've only used like two or three of my measurements, if that. I think they just went with my widest measurement, which would have been my hips, and just like cut it straight. Like there was no curve. The whole point of a mermaid dress is to show your curves. It looked like I was wearing a Coke can. It was terrible. Um, as I'm looking at the lace and I'm trying it on, like my heart is just sinking the whole time. So the lace at the bottom, this is lace that I put on 
And the only way to describe the, the lace that was originally on here was a Christmas tablecloth gone wrong. It was, it, I'm sure it was actually lace meant for a tablecloth because there was grapes on it. Who wants grapes on their wedding dress? And they were all outlined in like gold lame thread. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> the other thing was the lace that was all around here. Now you can sort of see in here, maybe I'll do a close up, how this piece was embroidered on a larger piece of sheer fabric. And then the edges are trimmed. That's a common thing. And it's also a common thing if you're doing a white dress and you're putting white appliques and it's been done on, on white sheer fabric, um, it's okay if there's kind of a little bit around the edges, like it's better to save those stitches and not clip too close um, and applique them on. Nobody's ever gonna notice, it's totally okay. But these that were here, I did all of these, um, <laughs> they, it looked like somebody had like gone to their grandma's curtains and just like roughly cut out the flowers and just basted them on. And you could see like the big ugly threads and everything, like there was no care in it. And, <laughs> and it was weird because this is original to the dress. There was some care put here. And my neighbor, I had already like talked to her and told her that I got my dress and she was like, oh my gosh, because she was going out of town, she couldn't come to the wedding. So she was like, come out and show me because we, we sit out on our decks and talk over the fence all the time. So I put my dress on, barely holding back the tears and I walk out and my neighbor looks at the dress and she goes, oh, and that's all she had to say. I bawled, I absolutely bawled. And I was so upset. And at this point, I can't go to a bridal shop because you need like crazy amounts of lead time for them to get your dress and then alter it and all that kind of stuff. So I have no options but to either fix this dress or sew a, a completely brand new dress when I said I never even wanted to sew my dress. I brought it into my studio, I threw it on the table and I like, I left it. I didn't touch it for like a week. I was so upset. After that week and like I had kind of calmed down and chilled out and I I started every once in a while I'd walk through and kind of like pull at it and see what was what was up with it what was wrong with it what was right with it um in terms of what was right with it um this ruching I didn't have to touch at all it was beautiful this applique was great this ruching was fine too but here's the thing, because it had no, it didn't fit me, I had to take in the sides by a considerable amount. And so even though this was really nice, I had to undo all of it, except for about that much. So I had to pull off all the beads and I had to unstitch it all, careful not to like ruin the fabric underneath. Um, and then because I ended up messing with the bottom, which we'll get to that in a minute, this hand ruching all came out. So I ended up having to redo that. So the only things that didn't get touched at all um, was this top ruching. I also had to take the dress in at the back and so I had to like re-put in all of the loops for um, the tie up back and yeah, everything, everything else got redone. <laughs> um, the other thing that was right is the fabric was quite nice. Uh, ex with the exception of the lace. The fabric was really good quality. The lining is really good quality. So I didn't have to worry about that. And I thought, you know what? I've got something to work with here, I just need to suck it up and get it done. And once I came to that realization, I thought, well, hell, I might as well make it even cooler and make it a convertible dress so I can take the big poofy bottom off and have a short dress to dance in. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what's wrong with my brain that I went from like, I will not sew my dress to, hey, how about I take this dress and make it even more complicated than it needed to be? But that's, go big or go home. So I think, what we'll do is I'll take, um, I'm gonna go through sort of item by item, what I changed, how I changed it, uh, and we'll just kind of take it as it comes, okay? All right, so the first thing I had to do was I had to dismantle it um, to get it ready for the refashion. So yes, I had to pull off all of the beading and the lace except for right there. Um, I had to open up the back seam so that I could take it in there. I have a sway back, so I needed to take it in at the sides and at the back. Um, I also needed to take all of the lace that was here and take it off. 
And because I needed to change out the lace that's in the bottom, I basically had to take the whole skirt off, which is why at that point it was like, I might as well make it a convertible because the whole thing's pulled apart anyway. Okay, so because this lace was so nice in here, I knew that I needed all the rest of my lace um, to match this. And I'm hoping that the color picks up here, but it's kind of um, an antique type color. It's not white, it's not a pure white. And there's a gold thread in there that kind of just gives it a little bit of shimmer. So whatever I added to this, I needed it to match. And so when it came to this stuff, Um, all of these appliques were a pure, pure, bright, bright white. I got them all from a dance studio here in town. Um, and they're all a whole bunch of individual pieces that I've just kind of put together. So what I did to get them kind of the more antique color is I actually tea dyed them to get the base color where it needed to be. And then I took some fabric paint with gold glitter and I just brushed it on so that it sort of mimics the gold thread that was happening above it. Then I went and hand stitched these all on and then I beaded on top of it um, because I wanted some of the beads to be on the red as well not just on the applique so admittedly the inside is a bit messy with stitching but the outside looks great so that's all I really cared about. All right so down here when I replaced the lace and I did put a full crinoline underneath it um, I didn't, I wanted to be able to mimic again sort of that gold sparkly thread, um, but I didn't want to paint gold glitter all over this. So what I did is I actually put a layer of sparkle crinoline underneath and then just put the lace on top. This lace I purchased was definitely not what came, it had a really nice pretty edge. Um, yeah, and I, I really like how that turned out. Um, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to show you what I did for the train and how I um, made it so that the train could go up and then we'll get into how it's convertible. So it's not a, like a super crazy long train but it was long enough that um, when I was walking outside and when I was doing like my father-daughter dance I did want to be able to pull that train up and get it out of the way. Um, there's more than one layer um, on my train and so underneath this layer there's a skirt hook hidden right there and then what I did was I put a stitch through and it goes through all the layers of my train and it's a really really god what did I even use for that some kind of waxed like thin wax cording and when I put the loop in um, I sewed two little pearl um, beads right beside so that it would be really easy to find that loop. I didn't want like my <laughs> bridesmaids to have to be searching all day to find it because um, it is quite invisible. And so all I had to do was hook that onto the skirt hook and then this one would come back down. So basically my train ends up looking like it's just more crinoline, more poof to the dress. Once my center panel was all tucked up, I had to also worry about these were um, part of the train. So I also have just a teeny little red stitch on the edges of these. And there are, you can see there's a skirt hook there. And they just slided on like that. And so that is the dress when the train is completely up. All right, let's talk about the convertibleness. Okay, so um, what is not like super obvious in this dress, it'll seem like it once I show it to you. So the bottom of this ruching, this is where my dress actually comes apart. Now I have spent enough time costuming and being in theater to know, to know that I desperately did not want a wardrobe malfunction. So I maybe over designed this a bit, but my fear was that somebody might step on my train and the whole thing would pull off. Um, so yeah, I it, it's on there, it's solid. Okay, so I used two different closures to hold this on. I used skirt hooks like I did for my train and I also used Velcro. 
Um, the skirt hooks were for strength, but the Velcro was to keep the skirt hooks from undoing if I moved around. Um, because it, it just takes a little bit to like unhook those, right? So there's, and like I said, the stitching of the lace on there, it's, it's not pretty on the inside, but it works. So the Velcro undoes, and then you hit a skirt hook and you have to undo the skirt hook to get the Velcro to keep releasing. There we go. This was um, just sort of like the shorter skirt. When when there's not a body in here with like legs holding it there, it looks kind of funny because it it's hanging from from higher up, so it doesn't it doesn't come to the end of the fabric. Um, but the reason I was able to do this is because I was lucky enough to find fabric that was almost a perfect match. I mean. Actually, in this shot, it looks kind of terrible because the light's going through it, but it's almost, it's maybe like half a shade off um, from the original fabric. So when I found this in the fabric store, I was like, heck yeah, like I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make it convertible, why not? And so I got all this put together, I got all my appliques put on, I got all the beading fixed. Um, the original tie for the back of the dress, was actually white so I replaced it with um, a red one so that it would just kind of blend in more and yeah that was it I was able to take this off to dance the night away and away we went it was great and so to put this on the skirt hooks actually really help there too because you get your hooks on and it holds kind of the positioning of where the skirt has to go and then you press your velcro on and away you go all right, so there we go. That was the story of the wedding dress and um, all the alterations that I had to do with it. What I hope I showed was that even when projects just frustrate you, even when you you don't want to do them and you think, oh my God, this is just, this is too much. I'm overwhelmed. If you take a step back, you can probably figure it out um, and end up with something that you really absolutely love. And that's what I ended up with. Um, I ended up with a better dress because it was convertible and I didn't have to lug it around all night. <laughs> I could just take it off when I was ready to. Actually, my husband and I took tango lessons and uh, yeah, so I had a shorter dress for that. Which I mean, you gotta show off the shoes too, right? <laughs> Sadly, I could not try it on for you today, but whatever, she don't fit. Um, and now I'm going to let my kids come in here because I promised them that they get to try it on now <laughs> because you can't pull out a pretty dress without letting everybody try it on. So I better make good on my promises. I hope that you had a good time going down memory lane with me. I hope maybe you learned a couple of tricks about uh, adjusting dresses to make them convertible if that's something that maybe you'd have to do at some point. And yeah, that's all I got for you today. I'll see you next time. Uh, make sure you subscribe below if you haven't already. <laughs>